Good evening. Um, this is Thursday night of the convention, and uh, I was made aware of something this morning. I had no idea uh, some stuff was happening out in Region 10, and so uh, this this hadn't come up under my radar, but um, I was listening in on a matter having to do with uh, Region 10 this morning in um, the executive committee. And then slowly, my aging brain, it, it, it put two and two together on, on a couple things. And uh, I had to put it out of my mind for a little while because, you know, the business of the day. And uh, it came kind of crashing in again near, um, I guess, late afternoon. And it was the story of the Don Hatch rule. Let me explain what this is. I'll tell you a little story. So way, way back in 2018, I was working at the Blue and Orange store at the time. A, um, the primary had just happened and uh, there was a certain region four chair her name was Dawn Hatch. She, uh, she knew she was about to get voted out because a bunch of conservatives just got voted into um, legislative district legislative district um, seats and stuff. And not only that, but Ryan Davidson had just got reelected to be chairman. And so she saw the writing on the wall. Now, any good, honorable person what they would do is that they would just do their last duty as chairman, and that is schedule the reorg and chair the reorg. She did. She decided to not do that. Now, there's a couple of other st side stories why she would, why we know she knew better than to not do that. But those are other stories entirely. They go all the way back to 2012. But anyway, uh, she knew not to do that. Now, at the time, the state rules, they didn't have the, the catch-all that they do now, where um, if a region reorg isn't scheduled in time, then there are certain consequences for that, and then you can continue on. Back then, there weren't such rules, and so the region effectively couldn't be legally reorganized as, as per the state rules. So, it was a handful of hours before we were in that state where nobody could really fix it. We don't know exactly what, but we believe that's a party that um, pressure from the state party at the time kind of forced her into scheduling a reorg meeting where she would then get vote, subsequently voted out with a whole new slate of officers. One of which, side story, because it's somewhat relevant, one of those officers was secretary, of course. For that year, for that, for, for that cycle, the Region 4 secretary was one Matthew Jensen. <laughs> I missed my own election as, secre as a Region 4 secretary because I had to work that night, and I didn't get enough notice to get it off of work. I would have made the time, but you know, I was working at Blue, the Blue and Orange store at the time, and uh, I might have been able to make a bigger stink about it or something, or switch shift with somebody, but that's a, a handful of days was not enough time. Usually you get a lot more notice with that kind of thing. But anyway, so, but uh, that whole thing, it left me admittedly angry and nervous that it might happen again. Now, we almost got into that situation again, but, uh, well, we'll get into that in a moment. So, back to the Region 10 thing. And uh, why is this story relevant? Well, because after... 
after that, uh, after the Pocatello convention and all the dust had settled from that, I was still pretty angry. Yeah, so I wrote a rule, which is now Article 3, Section 6 of the state rules, and it says in brief, uh, if I was at home, I'd bring it up on like over here or something and have all of the lines, but in brief, Article 3, Section 6 says, hey, if you're a region chair and you don't do your legal obligation of scheduling a reorganization meeting, your chair is now vacant. And the state now has to come in and do, you know, and chair the reorg. On top of that, if for some reason, Section 2, uh, ha, you know, the, the previous Section 2 has still not been followed, or for some reason there's also another catch-all in there. There's two subsections to Section 6 there. Now, here's another mini-situation that I don't think anyone reason, uh, I don't think anyone could reasonably expect. Because uh, I just didn't have the experience to really think of, okay, there might be new regions created. I don't think anyone's going to think of that, and I didn't. I thought that it was going to be a more or less static number, except because we used to have seven, now we have ten. Well, see, when you create a new region via the, via the rules, what happens is that you don't have anything re uh, resembling an incumbent. So your chair is already vacant and you can't, you, you know, you, you've triggered a couple of things here that I wrote about. And plus, automatically dumping uh, a chair and stuff. So I, and so I ref wrote that and referred to it as the Don Hatch rule. Meaning, you can't, you know, a, a, an outgoing region chair can't do stuff like that. There's one particular friend who uh, really doesn't like it when I refer to uh, it as the Don Hatch rule. That friend is Brock Frazier. And if he ever sees this video, I don't know if he would or not. Uh, I'm unbothered. But if he does, well, Brock... It is the Don Hatch rule. That's what we're. That's what's been called for a few years now, and it became relevant in a lot more situations than you thought. Now, problem being is that the situation with that and the vacancies and all the other matters, it caused the state party to have to rule in a certain way. That, in turn, caused a fight with a bunch of the people out in what is now Region 10. So, I don't... So, you can understand why I actually have a little bit of guilt. Because the last thing I wanted to do was actually create a fight over this stuff. This stuff was supposed to end a fight and get things back into working order. But, people started ignoring the state party. And I think they pretty much ignored the state party because the chair of the Idaho Republican Party is a woman. You might, you know, a lot of people saying, no, I don't, I'm principled. Again. No, that's probably with the, the way that you're lying to yourself, you know, in here. It's probably not what's actually happening. There's a lot of people, a lot of people who unjustly and very irrationally hate Dorothy Moon. And you, but I keep, you know, I tell all the relevant people today while we're in, in between bits of business of the convention, you know, it's the first day of the convention. It's like, hey, yeah, I'm the one that did this. They're all telling me, oh, you're fine. In fact, Mark Fuller was... I, you, know, you know, he's actually very appreciative. In fact, the two words that uh, I got a lot of guff from uh, my friends of the, you know, my friends of the time, 
uh, Ryan Davidson and Brock Fraser, they gave me a lot of guff for using the words post-haste. That apparently, say, those two words saved the situation from getting worse, <laughs> you know, in Region 10. So, um, there you have it. I've now bared my guilt. Everybody says I'm fine, but yeah, I was fixing a much different problem, to be quite honest. And I don't, and it's not to say that I don't think, you know, it's not to say that I think that the uh, rules should be changed. No, we should absolutely keep it in as is. What, sh the thing that should change is everybody's reaction to getting things, you know, to a, a state chair that is getting things in working order. Because we all know the the opposition to her doing that stuff is not principled and is therefore vapid and facile. But that's another discussion for another time. So uh, I'm not even going to trust the, uh, hotel, uh, the motel Wi-Fi. You can probably guess from the um, background here that this is a Motel 6. They did not keep the light on for us. They did not keep the light on for us. Thank you, Tom. So uh, I'm going to stop here upload this, do all the clicky, clacky metadata things, and uh, y'all have a good rest of the convention. Blessings.